Uh, hello everyone, I'm Natme and in my social distancing mood, I will present you our result in Verifiable Inner Product Encryption Scheme, which is a joint work with Vincenzo, Alfredo, Peter Rone and Peter Raya. Uh, I will start my presentation with a short introduction on Functional Encryption Scheme, FE, and then explain the concept of verifiability for FE in general. Uh, then I will define inner product encryption scheme IP for short and then I can introduce our perfectly correct IP which allows us to construct a verifiable IP and I will end up my presentation with uh, mentioning some application of uh, verifiable uh, inner product encryption scheme. Okay. Uh, as you all know, in classical encryption scheme, the output of the decryption algorithm is either the original message or some error. While in FE, the output of the decryption algorithm is an evaluation of the original message or some error. So in FE, we need to have at least four algorithms. Uh, one algorithm to generate the token for a specific functionality. Uh, for example, uh, here function F. We need a setup algorithm to generate a master public key and master secret key, uh, which this master secret key used in token generator algorithm, and the master public key is used in encryption algorithm. And encryption algorithm works as usual, taking the message and master public key as input and generates some cipher. Uh, in the standard setting of FE, it's assumed all the party uh, to run al their algorithm faithfully. And uh, this uh, implies that in presence of any dishonest party, either the party who run the setup or the encryptor, uh, the decryption output may be inconsistent, and this raises serious issue in practical application. So, uh, for example, this is an interesting scenario that's mentioned in this paper. Uh, assume uh, there is a cloud server which stores some encrypted image or document, and the police may require the server to search for a specific image of some criminal. And the server can generate some token for the police which recover the data if and only if the data includes the criminal name or image. As you can see here, FE would be useful because it helps to recover the related data while it preserves the privacy of innocent users. However, if the server somehow relates to the criminal, the server related to the criminal, it's possible for the server to generate a faulty token for the police. Uh, and since the police just use the token for the decryption algorithm, he never know that he has the valid token or the faulty token. Uh, so, to, in order to solve this problem for functional encryption scheme, uh, in this paper in 2016, uh, they put forth the concept of verifiable FE, which essentially guarantees that dishonest encryptors and authorities, even when cluding together, are not able to generate ciphertext and token that give inconsistent results. So, the concept of verifiability uh, says something like this, that if in some FE we have some public verification algorithm such that uh, uh, if some string like ciphertext, master public key and the token pass this uh, public verification procedure, then uh, for every uh, output of the decryption algorithm there exists some message M such that F of M is equal to Y. And also, if we have uh, two different tokens uh, for, function, uh, for function f and g, then there exists a message that f of m is equal to y and g of m is equal to z. Uh, just note that we have we use the same ciphertext for both of these decryption algorithms. Uh, we will uh, give a formal definition for verifiability later on in IP scheme. I just uh, like to mention this, uh, this point that uh, verifiability and security are two conflict conflicting requirements for an encryption scheme. It means that if you put too much effort to make a scheme verifiable, uh, I mean that's perfect verifiable, maybe we lose this, somehow the security. 
or via versa. So uh, this is the reason why having a secure, verifiable encrypted scheme is a challenging uh, problem. And the product encryption scheme is a notable special case of FE uh, for this functionality. Here, the message is a pair of M and X, which M is uh, a member of the message space that we call it payload message, and the vector X is the attribute uh, coming from the set of sigma. And the token is associated, associated with a vector V, uh, with also, which, is, uh, which also is from this set. And the functionality is uh, this function, which returns M if the inner product of X and V is zero, and uh, this symbol otherwise. Uh, same as FE in IP, we have four algorithms. Uh, set of algorithms generate master secret key and master public key. Uh, the only difference is uh, here we have the vector length as input. And in encryption algorithm, we have encrypt, uh, we uh, encrypt the payload message M respect to attribute X. And the token is generated for the vector V, which uh, specifies the function. And finally, this decryption algorithm. Uh, the IP, uh, any IP uh, needs to have a correctness property, uh, and uh, the correctness property is that the output of the decryption algorithm is the original message, and if the inner product of X and V is zero. Uh, and this probability should um, occur with the overwhelming probability. It means that here we are allowed to have a negligible probability of error. Uh, also notice that in attribute hiding IPE, the vector X is kept secret, and the only information someone can get from the decryption algorithm would be the vector is orthogonal to vector V or not. Uh, essentially, VIP is similar to IP except that it has uh, some extra verification algorithm. Uh, verifying the ciphertext, verifying the token, and verifying the master public key. Uh, these three verification algorithms output one if the input was correctly generated, and output zero otherwise. Uh, verifiable uh, IP also needs its uh, correctness, but uh, one subtle difference between the correctness in IP and VIP is that VIP has to have a perfect correctness. This means that this probability must be equal to 1. Because if uh, this scheme has a negligible probability of decryption error rather than perfect correctness, then this honest party might close with each other so that the invalid result would be accepted by the verification algorithm. And um, uh, actually, achieving the perfect correctness for some IP is quite a challenging. Uh, a step. Uh, also, a verifiable IP need to have a verifiability property, which said that for every a string, uh, here MPK, ciphertext, and the token, if this string pass the verification algorithm, then the output of the decryption algorithm would be equal to uh, the, func the evaluation of this function for some message M. Also here, the probability should be equal to 1. So to uh, start uh, constructing VIP, first we need to uh, have a perfectly uh, correct IP. To our knowledge, most IP schemes known in the literature have an actual probability of error, which makes cheating possible. And so they are not directly visible to construct VIP. So our first challenge was to construct one. We start with IP scheme introduced in uh, by Park. Uh, in this scheme, the decryption algorithm output M star, which uh, M star is equal to this formula. Uh, here, uh, lambda one and lambda two are randomness value used in the token generation algorithm, and S three and S four are randomness used in the encryption algorithm. And as we can see. Uh, this part is a random value. And M star, which we equal to M, if the inner product of X and V is equal to zero. 
but it also would be equal to m if lambda 1 is 3 plus lambda 2 is 4 is equal to 0. Uh, this is the first issue because we don't want this to happen. And this is exactly the point that the negligible uh, probability of uh, error um, rise. And here there is another issue, which is how the decryption algorithm is, and which is how the decryption algorithm decides whether to accept the output of the decryption or not, because the decryption algorithm doesn't know anything about, doesn't know any information about the vector x, so it doesn't know that x and v are orthogonal or not. So it's really important to uh, how to decide that output m star or output the error. Uh, the first item would be the following. Generate two ciphers x, ct, and ct prime with two independent random values. Uh, decrypt both cipher text to get m1 and m2. Uh, output m1 if m1 is equal to m2 and accept the result, or if uh, m1 is not equal to m2, uh, output the error. But uh, this is not working because regard less of uh, the inner product of x and v, uh, if these two uh, random values are equal to each other, then m1 is equal to m2. So in this scenario, uh, we would uh, have uh, more serious issues. Uh, so to avoid uh, that issue, we choose the randomness value in a way that uh, that equality can never occur. Uh, to do so, in the encryption algorithm, we choose non-zero randomness value S1 to S4 and S1 to S4, such that S3 is not equal to uh, S3 prime and S4 is equal to S4 prime. In this case, this uh, in this case, since uh, lambda one S3 plus lambda two S4 is never equal to lambda one. S3 prime plus lambda 2 S4, we can uh, conclude that M1 is equal to M2 if and only if the inner product of the, uh, the vector x and v is equal to 0. And uh, the decryption algorithm just outputs M if both of, the, uh, if M1 is equal to M2 and otherwise it outputs the error. Uh, so, during our research, we went through this cycle a lot, uh, modified the scheme, designed the verification algorithm, tried to do the security proof, then we uh, didn't manage to do the security proof, then we had to modify the scheme again, and uh, uh, we went through this cycle a lot, but um, fortunately, we finally could manage to uh, get the result. Uh, we Finally, we had our perfectly correct inner product encryption scheme, uh, which is efficient because uh, uh, no need to solve a discrete log in decryption algorithm, and this uh, implies that we have we can use this inner product encryption scheme for a uh, line message space, and also it's secure. It's indistinguishable secure uh, based on the standard assumption based on DLIN and BDDH and also it is attribute hiding. And this um, helps us to construct our verifiable inner product encryption scheme with uh, the major advantage of uh, this VIP is that we don't need any trusted party. And now I would like to talk a little bit about how we construct our VIP. To do so, we use uh, the transform of uh, Fe to V, Fe uh, introduced in uh, this paper, which asks for a perfectly uh, correct Fe to a verifiable Fe. Uh, for doing this, we need four perfectly correct IPE uh, aligned with uh, a commitment scheme and NIVI proof system. This means that we have to run each algorithm four times with different uh, master public key and different master secret key. And each algorithm also uh, has an extra step to provide a proof uh, for some specific relation. Uh, 
for example, for encryption algorithm, the uh, encryption algorithm generates four ciphertexts, CT1 to CT4, and then we need to provide a proof that either all of these ciphertexts are the encryption of the single message, M, or two out of four of these ciphertexts are the encryption of the same message, and that zero is commitment to some value, and that one is a commitment of zero. Uh, Z0 and Z1 are part of the public parameter that's uh, generated in the setup algorithm. I'm not going to uh, explain more about them because it would be it will be a little bit confusing. So based on this uh, kind of uh, predicate that we need to provide that our these four cipher text uh, kind of satisfy this predicate. Uh, based on this, we define the specific relation for our uh, our scheme. As you can see, it's a little bit messy. Uh, in the next step, based on the structure of our cipher text that you can see here, we define uh, some variable and to relate this variable, this actually ciphertext to this relation, we design this system of equation. And then we use the gross eye proof system for this system of equation to generate a proof, the Nivi proof, that our ciphertext actually satisfy this predicate. Uh, also, of course, we prove that this uh, system of equation is equivalent to that relation. Uh, just, I'm not going to detail of this uh, system of equation. As you can see, it's a little bit messy. Uh, the only thing that I would like to mention that uh, we had another challenge in generating the Nivi proof system and using the Grosahai technique. And the challenge that we had was related to some of the relation that uh, defined in the transformation for FE to verifiable FE. Because in some of the rela some of the relation consists of generalized form of disjunction and the standard technique to implement disjunction for gross eye proof cannot be directly applied. So we had to um, do some modification and which you can see it in the paper. Okay, this almost I, I almost done, and in the last part, I like to just uh, briefly uh, explain, uh, briefly talk about the application of the IPE. Uh, there are many applications for IPE and VIPE. For example, anonymous identity-based encryption scheme, predicate encryption scheme with supporting polynomial evaluation, hidden vector encryption, and polynomial commitment scheme. And in the last, uh, to construct a verifiable polynomial commitment scheme from our VIP, uh, Alice can, uh, do, can do the following steps. Uh, assume uh, she has this polynomial in ZPX uh, and she wants to commit to this polynomial and she doesn't want to reveal this polynomial. So uh, she can uh, define the vector X based on the polynomial coefficient uh, and put the 1 in the last component, uh, run the setup algorithm uh, and uh, for dimension D plus 1 to generate the uh, pair of keys and encrypt this vector with this um, VIP scheme to generate the ciphertext. And as a commitment, uh, she can send the commitment, she can uh, send the master publicity and the ciphertext to Bob. And in opening phase, if Bob wants to get the evaluation of polynomial on value M, uh, he can define the vector V as this and ask for the token for this vector. As you can see, uh, the inner product of x and v is equal to polynomial on point m minus y. 
So if the output of decryption algorithm is equal to zero, it means that the polynomial evaluation of value m is equal to one. And so, and since this is a verifiable polynomial commitment, uh, it doesn't, uh, there is no need that Bob trusts uh, Alice uh, to be honest. So if all the verification algorithms output one, it means that Bob can trust Alice, otherwise mm, he doesn't need to. So uh, I think almost that's it. And this is my reference. Actually, it's the reference that I used in my presentation. Um, thank you for your attention, and I would be happy if, I, uh, if there is some question.